morning. Um, uh, delighted to welcome no stranger to this stage either, uh, Mr. Yakia Al Yakia, who is Chief Executive Officer of Gulf International Bank, of course, here and after GIB. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, about the bank and its plans and its change in strategy, uh, and of course, more generally, about the financial services industry in, in Saudi Arabia and beyond. So let's start a little bit on, on the retail banking side, because <coughs> the bank has, it's fair to say, made a, a strategic shift in recent years um, into retail banking, not, not abandoning its traditional um, commercial banking, investment banking, market-related activities, but augmenting that with more retail banking. Um, Minister al -Asaf in his opening remarks, uh, said, uh, I'm not here to tell you that a year from now the rules will be in place for a, a, a surging financial services industry. I'm here to tell you that they're already in place. We've done it early. Is that how it feels from your side of the fence? And, and tell us a little bit more generally about your strategy in the retail banking sector. Sure. Thank you, uh, Christopher, and thank you for your money for inviting me again. Uh, I'm always delighted to be here. Uh, but really, at the outset, uh, let me just commend uh, the participation of the CMA in uh, the uh, deliberations and sponsorship of this conference after a, a long absence uh, from uh, participation. Uh, uh, to tell you the truth, I am extremely delighted of that. and. Uh, I must commend the new chairman of the CMA uh, for his uh, very astute uh, attention to the uh, needs in the uh, uh, Saudi financial markets. Uh, he uh, really has been playing music to our ears uh, with his emphasis on the debt capital markets. So I would like to congratulate you on uh, being able to uh, uh, have the CMA participate. We're delighted CMA. to have him here, and we'll come on to wholesale bond markets and, and uh, how that plays, of course, back into things like mortgages sure. in, in a moment or two. But if you could just sketch yeah, where we I are. I will on get the to, your, uh, yeah. to your uh, question. Uh, the first part of your question is about GIB. GIB has really enjoyed a number of comparative advantages in the, in the past. Uh, it has a, an excellent footprint in the GCC. It has had maintained top uh, relationship with top tier clients across the GCC uh, for 20 to 30 years. Uh, uh, that is really a comparative advantage no indigenous bank does have. Secondly, uh, GIB has a fantastic global outreach that uh, uh, it has had enjoyed for a long time. It's been uh, in the league with the top players globally. Third, it has developed niche areas uh, in areas like project finance, structured finance, uh, 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 capital markets uh, uh, engagement, asset management. However, the biggest weakness that uh, uh, GIB had was uh, the funding side. Uh, it always had a problem raising funds Pre-crisis, uh, we have witnessed uh, a long period of about 10 to 15 years of easy money, cheap money. It's been taken for granted that it's going to be forever. Uh, and consequently, many wholesale banks uh, uh, found it uh, easy to venture into long-term funding, etc., taking the funding uh, 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 from the market uh, for granted. The recent financial crisis came to remind not just GIB, but also all wholesale institutions across the globe that funding is an issue. Uh, back to Banking 101, the mismatch of the assets and liabilities is an issue. And again, if you go back to bank, Banking 101, the most stable and affordable funding base is really the retail. And consequently, in the wisdom of, 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 with the wisdom of the board and uh, management and the shareholders, uh, it was decided that if GIB is to capitalize on all of those comparative advantages that it had and had built over the years, mm -hmm. and to sustain being uh, innovative and, and, and 
an important player in the markets, especially in the GCC, it has to have uh, a foot in the retail in order to have this uh, uh, stable and affordable funding. So, so you approach the, the retail banking strategy very much from the, the point of view of the liability side of your balance sheet. Correct. Um, what type of, of products are you offering or, or expecting to offer in future in order to attract those deposits? Well, uh, once you, you towards housing finance. Sure. Yeah, no, 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 no. I have no problem. You know, yeah. everybody in, around here, you know, knows what needs to be done. I mean, we're not really, uh, 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 re, re, I mean, we're really not reinventing the wheel. However, the motivation for getting into the retail is from the liability side. However, once we are in it, then the asset side is also lucrative as well. Uh, uh, w you know, we've reviewed what uh, banks have done here in the region, in particular in Saudi Arabia, especially new entrants. And we've reviewed the trends globally. And, and, and where is retail banking headed? And we decided that uh, we will be very focused. We will be offering uh, a limited number of products, basic products, simple products. Uh, and we would be offering it to a particular niche of uh, the client type base what we call the technophiles. So we will be targeting a segment of the market that is uh, tech savvy. Uh, we will build our retail leveraging the technology. Uh, we are now building a state of the art technology uh, IT uh, platform. Uh, we, are, we have engaged in the social media to try to understand the technophiles uh, needs and requirements. That's because the channels through which you want your customers to tra transact business are online. You, you want that to be their principal mode of interacting with you? Correct. They are no longer an alternate uh, uh, channel uh, of service for us. They are the channel of service. So if I have an account, I, I can't go and see my bank manager, Mr. Smith, sitting in the branch? You don't need to. You don't need to. We are developing the technology, even at the level of KYC, that would enable you to uh, remotely do all your transactions uh, uh, and, and meet all your needs, retail so, needs. So how big is that market segment in Saudi Arabia, according to your marketing investigation? It's a, it's a larger market. Uh, no bank has really capitalized on this segment particularly. Most of the banks, whether in Saudi Arabia or abroad, are, uh, are offering it as an alternate channel, as offering it as, a, by the way, we have an internet service, we have a, 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 a telephone service. Uh, but uh, uh, that's why, because of the legacy of the brick and mortar mo models that are adopted by many of the banks, uh, those were heavy investments that are made and they would continue to cater to the customers that require the branch service. Mm. In our model, we are not interested in that segment of the market. Uh, we will leave it for the uh, present participants in the market to enjoy. So you, want, you want Mr. Banks with his iPad? Correct. So do we all. And I'm, and I'm capitalizing on the youth uh, I'm capitalizing on the people who have the gadgets in their hands, who are so advanced in using them, even uh, beyond, you know, I see it with my kids. Uh, they challenge me. They do, beat me at... Do, uh, do, you, do you tweet yourself, Yaka? I, I do. I do occasionally. Do you play but, Angry uh, Birds? Sorry? Do you play Angry Birds? I don't, but I watch my kids do that. Uh. Um, well, I have an angry bird at home, but uh, um, so you talk about the deposit side being an important and high quality source of source of funding for the bank, notwithstanding that, as you've already mentioned, um, the CMA uh, and Mohammed Al Sheikh are, are very much pushing the idea of, of increased bond market activity, and that, of course, in turn would underpin uh, a more active mortgage market, which plays back into the retail banking side. So um, what do you see happening now in terms of new areas of capital markets funding 
uh, particularly Sukuk, for example. You yourselves have done a Sukuk. You underwrote a Sukuk for, for Bahrain. So you're, you know, you're on both sides of that capital equation. Um, how do you see that developing? And then perhaps we can talk a little bit about when you were roadshowing your own deal, what sure. sort of questions investors asked. Sure. Uh, just a quick comment about GIB uh, Sukuks. Uh, uh, you know, when I mentioned the financial crisis put the bank in a very awkward position where there is a huge mismatch between assets and liabilities, it was also inevitable for the bank to go out and raise long-term funding. And, and, uh, 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 and, you know, we went through a, a fantastic experience both domestically uh, and internationally, uh, and, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a fantastic story. Uh, however, back to your question on, uh, on, uh, uh, on the debt capital market, I have been an advocate over many years of the need to really develop this market. Uh, it's, uh, and, and this is why I was pleased with uh, Mr. Al Sheikh uh, emphasizing uh, this area as, a, as an area for future development. You see, post financial crisis, or, or even if we look be, before the financial crisis, before the financial crisis, because of the abundance of capital, like I said, banks found themselves uh, uh, tempted to provide long-term funding, and especially for project finance, for infrastructure. However, after the financial crisis, uh, with the new re regulatory regimes that are coming out of Basel and, uh, uh, and elsewhere, uh, banks are going to be extremely constrained uh, uh, to offer uh, the long-term funding that is needed. As a result, the only way this gap can be filled is through the debt capital market. Today, from, since the financial crisis until today, we've seen the government expanding their uh, lending programs through institutions like PIF, like uh, SIDF, and, and others. But that, that is going to be a very temporary fix. Uh, unless you have a functioning debt capital market, uh, you are not going to be able to fund the long-term projects that are anticipated, whether by companies like SABEC or, or SEC or uh, 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 developmental projects like the railroads and, and, and uh, uh, the new industrial uh, developments like Ma'adin and others. And consequently, it's paramount to really uh, facilitate the development of this market. Unfortunately, and to make a reference to uh, what Dr. Al-Assaf said this morning, uh, many regulations may be in place. Uh, there, there is a gap in the debt capital markets, but I think it's not really the, only the laws. You really need the infrastructure. The debt capital market requires an infrastructure that needs to be put in place. Uh, it's not helping that the government is extinguishing its debt. You really need government debt in the market to create the yield curve. You need benchmarks. Uh, you bench need for ratings, benchmarking on so the pricing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite welcome. Recently, the uh, government is guaranteeing the issue of Sukuk for, uh, uh, for GACA, for example, to fund the, uh, the King Abdulaziz Airport with a government guarantee. That will help in in uh, bringing in the uh, yield curve that, that will be needed. I, I, I hope the government would expand in offering the guarantees for such projects. Now, uh, uh, a rating uh, service is very important. SABIC and SEC and others who are uh, huge companies can go and tap into the international markets to get ratings. But the uh, less, uh, uh, the, the smaller in size, may not be able to. And consequently, you need some rating service. Look, uh, Christopher, in the past, banks leveraged their ability to assess credit risk in order to be able to uh, evaluate projects and extend long-term funding. Now, 
if you are issuing sukuk or, or bonds, you are not, you are going to the investors, the institutional investors. Institutional investors do not have the capability to assess credit risk. They understand market risk, they understand sovereign risk, they understand many aspects of risk, but they don't have the capability to assess the credit risk. Hence it's the really the banks yeah. who have that capacity. Now they cannot leverage it, so you need a rating service that assesses your credit risk. Although, in a sense, too, there's perhaps <clears throat> something else playing into that, which is the well-publicized uh, problems over so-called name lending, which we talked about here two or three years ago. Um, so at the same time as the regulatory pressures, uh, capital adequacy pressures on banks, uh, the desire for greater market activity, market discipline and the transparency it brings and the need for ratings also perhaps help to move those second-tier corporates into a, a better place in terms of corporate governance. And another thing, of course, that Mr. Ashaik said this morning was that corporate governance was was, was not world-class um, outside the CMA itself. He made that point very clearly. Now, is market discipline, is one of the collateral benefits of the growth of capital markets a new kind of transparency, a new kind of good governance within corporate Saudi Arabia? Of course, of course. The, uh, the tapping of the debt capital market is going to enhance all of these. It will enhance the transparency, it will enhance the governance, because if you're tapping into the, uh, 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 into the institutional investors uh, funding through the, uh, through the capital markets, uh, they're not fools. Uh, the, the, the investors are not fools. They want to see, they want to understand how credible, how, uh, uh, how, how well an entity is governed, how uh, transparent it is. So all of that is going to really help enhance transparency, uh, good governance, uh, 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 because the benefit is better access to the market, better financing, more affordable financing. It's a virtuous cycle. Absolutely. <coughs> so <coughs> to come back, perhaps work, looking at first at your own example of, of raising bonds, uh, raising capital through the bond markets, is Saudi risk properly understood and managed effectively? Do the international markets ratings agencies among them, do they understand and price Saudi risk correctly? When you talk of Saudi risk, uh, you need to look at uh, maybe three categories of Saudi entities. Uh, the sovereign risk is very well understood, albeit I agree with um, Dr. Al-Asaf that uh, the present rating of the Saudi sovereign uh, deserves to be upgraded. Uh, but that risk is very well understood by the rating agencies and by the investor base. And we have witnessed this in the market, when uh, both at the rating level and the perception with the investors, the fact that we associate it with the Saudi sovereign risk. The second entity are government-related entities or, or uh, large corporations like the SABICs of this world, the SECs of this world, uh, those are also understood in the context of the sovereign. And consequently, uh, that risk is well-priced. And this is why we see SEC, for example, going out to the international markets, issuing Sukuk for 30 years, unheard of, first time, and I must congratulate Ali and his colleagues for being able to achieve such a milestone. So, so for sovereign and for sovereign related entities, that risk is well understood. Uh, you, you, you can, be, uh, you can uh, hope for a little more, but I think it is well under. The trouble is uh, all corporate entities which have no uh, link with the government specifically. Uh, and for those, you really need a rating service that is entrenched in the ground here in the market. Uh, people who are living in the market, breathing the, the uh, atmosphere of the market, understanding the intricacies of the risks, uh, and being 
being able to provide the proper assessment. So <clears throat> implicit in what you're saying is that at the moment, for that kind of second tier or non-government related entity, uh, the risk is not properly understood. Correct. Right. So uh, simply because there are no me, there aren't enough means to be able to assess the credit risk, the credit worthiness of those institutions. Uh, 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 you know, unless you really have probably a domestic rating agency or a regional rating agency, and, and you know, there are examples around the world, you know, uh, the impact of the Malaysian rating agency over the last 20 years since its establishment and how it has had contributed to in, uh, bringing depth and width in the debt capital market in Malaysia, where uh, uh, many entities in Malaysia are able to, to tap the domestic market that, uh, in, you know, at the same time they were not able to, uh, to, 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 to tap. Now they are moving into the international market. And that's thanks to the uh, good work done by the uh, Malaysian rating agency, Ram, and, uh, and, and the other. Is there such an agency sort of bubbling under somewhere out there? Do you expect to see the emergence? Well, of I was very hopeful, you know, uh, there, was a, there was a conference uh, or a workshop uh, conducted like two, uh, uh, maybe a month ago uh, by Standard & Poor's, and it was co-sponsored by uh, CMA, which was very refreshing, uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, what is it? There is a group uh, the, in Dubai, the, the regional Gulf uh, Bond Society or something of the sort. And I read in it that this is probably an an initial attempt to try to shed some light on the need for a rating agency, and I sincerely hope that this can take off as quickly as possible. Very good. <clears throat> if anybody out there is planning to launch such a service, please tell us and you can come and talk to us about it a year from now. Yaku, we'd love to carry on a little more, but there's a clear call to arms. Thank you very much indeed for your help. Thank you for coming and taking part. Thank you, Christopher.